Welcome to another edition of the Warrior Daily. I'm Sports Information Director Jeff Weiss, and joined today by tight ends coach Jeff Reardon. Welcome back, I guess is the best way to put it here. We were joking earlier that you came on board Coach Winterstaff a few years ago as a graduate assistant, went back to your alma mater for a while, came back as a safeties coach and video coordinator, did an awesome job on hype videos during the 2011 season, got some full-time experience last year at Baldwin Wallace, and now back again at Wayne State as a tight ends coach. Um, when you were in college, you played as a quarterback, and obviously you've coached on the defensive side. Do you think that helps you in explaining coverages or what, is, what to look for from the tight ends? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, the, the first year when I was hired, and, and let me go back just for a second before I answer that and, and talk about what you just said. Uh, you know, I have bounced around in the last five years. I've, I've moved five times in the last five years, and every time I've been able to come back to Wayne State and you know it, I've come back because it's such a special place um, it really is and it's a special place because Wayne State has special people and they have uh, from the top to the bottom from our athletic director uh, to the staff to the coaches down to our student athletes we have hard-working people and, and that's what makes this place so special you know people like you <laughs> I mean you're the best SID in the country and I mean that um, and that's why we've been so successful here at Wayne State. You know, there's a lot of GLIAC schools um, who, who have nice things, and everybody wants nice things. You know, everybody wants that indoor facility. Everybody wants those upgrades, but we've proven that there's more to winning than just that because all those schools that have those nice things haven't opened up their trophy cases in a long time, whereas our football program alone has opened up ours three times in the last three years. So um, that's what makes this place so special. Um, now, to answer your question about the, the quarterback side of things, um, yeah, when I was hired here, Coach Winters told me, if you want to be a great football coach, you need to, to, to coach on both sides of the ball. You need to get that experience. Um, and that's not to say that, that coaches who have always been on the offensive side of the ball, aren't, you know, there's not great coaches out there. Mm -hmm. But that has certainly helped me, understanding coverage play, being able to talk to my tight ends about you know, okay, this is exactly what this linebacker's taught to do in cover two or cover four. He's going to match you. He's going to wall you. He's going to carry you. You know, those things are, are going to be beneficial. So, yes, it's, it's certainly helpful to, to know both sides. Obviously, your group of tight ends is very young this year. You've got five guys in your quintet. Two of them are sophomores, and you've got three redshirt freshmen. Let's start with Ethan Walsh. Started every game as a redshirt freshman last year. Does well academically. Made the Gleak All-Academic team. More of a blocking tight end, but yet he did catch seven passes for us last year. Yeah, yeah. Ethan, Ethan, you know, he had a, a solid year last year, went through some growing pains, and, and, and really exceeded my expectations this spring. Uh, the thing about Ethan, like you said, he's a big, strong, physical kid, uh, and, and he's just the ultimate competitor. You know, it, it was fun to watch him go out and compete against Andrew Matt, who, in my opinion, is the best defensive end in the league. And, and see those two, you know, battle every day. Because uh, Andrew would get him sometimes, and Ethan would get him sometimes, but uh, he's the ultimate competitor. He finishes through the whistle, and if he's got an opportunity to put you on, on your back, he's going to do it. Um, and now we want to see him continue to get faster, continue to work on his, his speed, his quickness, uh, and, and, you know, add that dynamic of being more of a passing threat. Uh, speaking of passing threats, Trent Broadback was our Wayne State Offensive Rookie of the Year last year, has an eight-game reception streak, heading into 2013, and doing that as a true freshman, one of only two to play last year, Dalton Mikowski being the other. Give us an update on Trent. Yeah, Trent had a great season last year, uh, and now Trent needs to, to continue to grow and, and, and progress. And, and the thing about Trent, and, and really the thing about all these guys, you know, I've been fortunate uh, to come in and take over, like you said, a very young group, but I think your players are, are a reflection of their coaches. Mm -hmm. And... I'm very fortunate to be able to take over for Coach Wooster, who's our offensive line coach, uh, bleeds green and gold, um, but knows what it takes to be a Wayne State football player and knows you know, those core values that we believe in and, and did a great job of instilling those values into those guys, you know, being a man of character, a man of integrity, being accountable, mm -hmm. uh, work ethic, being a leader, uh, and buying into the, the family atmosphere. And you know, that's why I know that Trent's going to, continue to grow and going to continue to progress because he does things the right way, just like the other guys do. So I expect to see Trent uh, have a great season, continue to catch the ball for us, and, and, and also do a great job run blocking for us. Speaking of run blocking, you want somebody with big, strong, physical attributes. 
Aaron Weston seems to be like the prototypical build of a tight end. Redshirted last year as a true freshman, did extremely well academically. I think he even had a 4.0 one semester. I mean, just like you said, a typical Wayne State student athlete. Absolutely. Aaron's, the, the thing about Aaron, I think that anybody uh, will say is Aaron is a great family member. Aaron is a selfless person. He will do anything for anyone that's a part of this family. And uh, Aaron comes from a great program. He comes out of Rockford, which is one of the best programs in the state of Michigan. So he's coming from a, a championship culture, which is what we have here and what we want to continue to build here. Uh, so he, he understands the expectations and he knows what it takes to win. And, and Aaron's going to continue to work hard. Like you said, he, he has all the tools to be outstanding. And he's going to continue to work hard. And I think he's going to compete and, and, and you know push Trent and Ethan and, and, and work to get on the field this year. Another gentleman that registered last year, Nathan White, from another guy from Toledo, just like Trent. Uh, Nathan went to St. Francis de Sales. Give us a little update on Nathan. Nate is Nate is probably the most talented guy in the group. You know, um, looks the part as as athletic as as anybody. Uh, and and you know, Nate had to had to take the year off last year, which which hurt him a little bit. So um, this spring he went through some growing pains and and. Uh, Nate is continuing to mature every single day, both on the field and off the field, you know, in the classroom and, and academics, social life, all those things. He's continuing to grow. So I think that, that Nate is, is, when it's all said and done, is going to be an outstanding tight end for us because, like he said, he's got all the tools, and if he continues to do things the right way and, and reaches his full potential, he's, he's going to be special. Wonderful. The newest member of the group is Dakota Ogles. Started out last year at Central Michigan, transferred back to Wayne State, at uh, Christmas time, so he was able to go through spring ball. How did Dakota fit in on as a tight end? Well, we didn't have him during the spring as a tight end. He was a, he was a defensive lineman, um, and we've got quite a bit of depth there right now. So we don't want Dakota to get lost in the mix because we think Dakota can can do some things for us and really help us. So, you know, we've got four tight ends. Why not have him come over and and you know see what he can do on our side of the ball? So. Uh, what I know about Dakota is Dakota is a great kid. Uh, he's, he's coachable. He's going to do exactly what you want him to do. Um, Coach Kaz obviously you know, loves him to death, has great <laughs> things about him. So I'm excited to have Dakota come over. And, and again, I think he's going to compete and, and, and you know, push those guys and, and look to get on the field as well. Sounds great. Well, we really appreciate you watching this edition of the Warrior Daily.